Okay, so you're all going then. All yes. of us, including the dog. <laughs> well, I'm not bringing the dog because that's just takes up too much space. <laughs> oh, wherever Wait. Apollo goes, Pandora goes. Except dog is totally. Wins. Oh shit! I think when I deleted your tokens, I deleted uh, the Duke, uh, the the Viscount's token too. Uh -oh. well it's not a big deal it's just a placeholder token i can go grab another one i just i guess he was in the same group and i didn't want to have two tokens on the screen at the same time times as much Didn't mean to talk there. Kind of your own cost. Town, I'll probably pick up some Master Chain Shirt Burning. Okay, so after you complete your sacrifice, um, the following day you can get an audience um, with Viscount uh, Grey Arch. Um, he is uh, very happy to see you and uh, asks what he can do for you. Um, I'm assuming Darius is the better Diplo checks. Or better just yeah. overall. Uh, Darius has plus 17 on diplomacy. Is there anyone better? No, I'm plus 12. Okay. Um. So first, before Sorry, Darius... how much are you, Darius? Sorry, what? How much is your check? Plus 17 on diplomacy, I was saying. Okay, I thought you said plus 7. I was like, 12 is higher than 7. <laughs> um before i even actually speak uh can i just do a sense motive to see if he's at all nervous or like if he like basically i want to assess suss out if i have any hint at all that he actually knows that there was an assassination plot against one of us or not like maybe there'd be some sort of slight nervousness i might detect if he knows okay you can roll sense motive Uh, you do not detect any uh, animosity or uh, nervousness about him. Um, this probably goes uh, over your head, Darius, because you've known this guy since you were a child. Like your earliest memories are of uh, having dinners with him and whatnot. Um, for uh, Apollo, he is a particularly weird um noble like he is very outgoing and friendly uh he tends to be very forthcoming and honest with you guys and very welcoming whereas most of the people in callum are not and damon you also noticed that is you have always gotten a very brisk or cold shoulder from everyone who you don't have some kind of pre-existing relationship with whereas you guys have always from day one even before Darius was in the uh, equation he was a very open and friendly guy so he uh, he definitely comes across as an unusual character in Callum he doesn't fit in with the very stern militant nature of most of the people here uh, so I'm just going to say um, uh, well uh Wait, what's um? Would be my lord, or would be that would be would be the correct form of address for a for a viscount? Would it be my lord, or uh, I don't know officially. My lord's fine. Okay, um, my lord, I it's uh, I have uh, I have uh, grievous news. It appears that uh, someone uh, someone is attempting to uh, 
to uh, frame uh, Count Dragon and perhaps set, uh, set, uh, set nobles against each other. That's interesting. Uh, do you know who is attempting this framing and what are they trying to frame him for? Um, well, uh, an, an assassin was, uh, was hired to assassinate, uh, Captain, uh, Captain Damon? Damon, yep. Yeah, Captain Damon. Uh, the, uh, the attempt was, uh, uh, was, was thwarted and the only thing, uh, the only thing that the assassin knew was, did not know who, um, who had hired, uh, it was her, right? Yep. Did not know who hired her. But uh, was asked as part of the contract to uh, to bring proof of uh, of the successful assassination to uh, to uh, to Count Dragon. Um, that seems legitimate. Um, that would be the procedure if there was an assassination um, commissioned. Normally, the procedure is to bring some significant item. Um, back as proof depending upon the terms of the agreement sometimes it's a head sometimes it's an organ usually it's a personal effect if it's not someone of uh high standing um i can't see why the count would order an assassination on captain damon i have had only glowing uh reports to him so far i haven't talked to him personally but i have sent him several letters about your deeds um in the sewers and your uh willingness to take on the uh smuggling issue uh well uh um my lord you seem to be um more astute in uh in matters of uh of political thorniness shall we say if uh if you were in my shoes, uh, what uh, what would you do? Well, if you have any concerns uh, about the Count's involvement in this, the best course of action would be to go and talk to him. Um, he holds courts in the mornings in, uh, in Copper Rock. Um, he holds uh, monthly sessions in the Black Star, depending upon uh, where he is. You can book an audience with him and talk to him about your concerns. Um, what, what, uh, what did you find out from this assassin? Um, the assassin didn't know. Um, the assassin simply simply took the job. Uh, the job was simply gave the location of Captain Damon. Um, the fact that uh, Captain Dave was, was to be killed and that proof was to be, uh, the deed was to be given to uh, Count Dragon. There was no other, um, no other information in the in the contract. And who was this assassin? Uh, did I get her name? <laughs> I don't think you ever asked her what her name was. Um, I um I did I I did not get a name, but I mean I have her. Physical, the physical description, but uh, I don't uh, don't know her name. Oh yeah, you also have her possessions. That's true. I just forgot to give them to you when we were in game. Were there any identifying? Well, I suppose she's an assassin, so that probably she wouldn't probably have any identifying stuff. Like <laughs> I the only. The only identifying uh, thing she had was a Moonclaw tattoo, and it was uh, on her uh, shoulder blade. Okay. Well, I will say that she had... Okay, I'll say she had a Moonblade uh, tattoo. That's about all I really know. Okay, well, the Moonclaws are the official assassins of uh, the Black Gauntlet, so it sounds like, unless she was dominated or manipulated in some way that she was a legitimate um assassin for the guild uh interesting would it be um 
would it be normal for guild members to uh to uh perform their uh their deeds in the in the home of a uh the uh the home of a baron without uh of the of Calum without uh, without notifying that baron well i'm not really deeply versed in the intricacies of assassination i find the whole process kind of distasteful and i have brought that to the count's attention on several occasions but when it occurs generally it's a matter of necessity and telling anyone that you're about to do it generally is tipping your hand so i'm sure that the uh the count was not aware of the circumstances in which this would be carried out but sometimes drastic measures are taken hmm. i was hoping uh i was hoping given that your your relationship with with the count that you might know something of this or at least know a know a third party who might uh, happen to be no more more in the know about this but i guess I guess you don't know of anyone who would know other than the, <laughs> the count himself, I guess. Um, Zolan would have information. In fact, he's probably the one that uh, issued the command. Well, all of the official documents will have the count's name on them. He just rubber stamps them as they come across his desk. Uh, Zolan does most of the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, sorry, out of character, do I know who Zolan is? Um, you know of Zoland, he is the Count's right hand. You don't really know much about him. He's a very mysterious figure. His name comes up here and there, and that's all you really hear is there is a guy named Zoland, and he does stuff. Is he a right hand like a like a steward, or like what in what capacity? Well, uh, even Dorian doesn't know a great deal about Zoland. Um, he does know that Zoland was in the Count's um, employ before uh, Dorian was, and Dorian's been uh, the uh, Viscount for like 15 years. <coughs> okay. Um... Okay, well, uh, I say, well, I uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much for your, uh, your, uh, your, your, your time and your, uh, wisdom, my lord. There is a rather interesting, um, rumor going around. You would be familiar with it because you've lived here all of your life. And what would that be? <laughs> I'm just uh, finding it, and I'm going to cut and paste it to the window. I missed the rumor if you said it. There you go. I put it in Discord. What was your question, Jesse? Oh, I just said I missed the rumor if you said it. Uh, so I guess at this point I just uh, politely uh, thank uh, the Viscount for his uh, for his uh, time and attention. Okay. Um, he says it was nice to see you, and uh, let me know if uh, there's anything else I can do for you. How are your um, smuggling investigations coming? Um. Well, we have uh, have been able to find one uh, one sm smuggling operation that was occurring uh, within the territory and put a stop uh, to that. Um, it does seem to be does we 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 found the trail of them going to the um, 
you know, going to the territory of the of the of the Outlander dwarves. So it seems that they're uh, they're responsible, and so at least put a stop to one particular uh, thing. But there's likely multiple multiple cells uh, cells aren't going. So it's uh, it'd be difficult. To, not sure where we can. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts what to do to fully like like apart from <laughs> apart from from outright war against the uh, uh, against the outlanders, which I don't think is something that that we're prepared to do. I don't know what we can do to stop them, and other than maybe just stop some more individual cells um, as we as we find them. Well, that's excellent. I'm glad to hear you're making progress. I'm sure the count will be very happy to know that you have stopped at least one of these cells. Yeah, that is that's certainly at least something. Do you have any idea how many cells there are? Um, out of character, I don't think we do, do we? <laughs> well, when you were talking to the smugglers, Gwen and <coughs> Hector, um, they basically implied that they didn't know of another smuggling operation, and they had a rather elaborate situation. So there's a pretty good chance that. As far as the smuggling operation is concerned, they were handling it themselves. Oh, okay. They didn't have a lot of details on where shit was going and who the rebels were, which was your other question. But uh, as far as the smuggling aspect was concerned, they were uh, they were pretty forthcoming of not knowing about any other smuggling and that their operation was huge. Like you saw those uh, caves under their land. They had a massive operation running. Okay. Uh, yeah, then as far as I know, we may have actually, um, we actually may have put an end to it. At least, at least the um, the aspect that went through Raven's Point itself, we seem to have at least um, stopped that from going. So I mean, I'm sure there'll be, I'm sure there's other smuggling in various places, but we seem to have stopped the uh, the Raven's Point link anyway. Well, that is excellent to hear, and I uh, wish you good luck in your future endeavors. Uh, thank you, my lord. Okay, if you don't have anything else, uh, he will uh, return to his duties. Nope, oh, that's it. Okay, so what's your plan from here? Well, I think we just head back, and I'll tell you guys, I'm I'm not really sure what else to do at this point. I mean, I say we could, we could, we could combat, we could confront either the count or the right hand directly, but that kind of seems like a bad idea in some ways because if uh unless there really is some sort of like i guess there could be some kind of deception going on under their noses but given how given the nature of um you know how lawful and militant things are in uh and again this is is you know bayonet territory it seems unlikely that there'd be such a slip up so, uh, so in other words if we can, like, if he went to the trouble to order an assassination like this, then he probably believes that it's necessary, and us going to him probably wouldn't change his mind. So we're better off, <laughs> we're better off maybe not talking to him. I don't, I don't know what I mean. Now it's just my my thoughts. What do you guys think? And hey, Damon, are you sure there's anything you haven't told us? <laughs> well, let's think about the possible, like the matrix of possible um, parts of the situation. <clears throat> let's say that Count Dragon really has some reason that he wants to assassinate Damon Thor. So if he does, then we have to sort of assume that he's not going to back down if we just send him a letter or go there in person and ask him nicely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. On the other hand, if he's not in on it, then, and he really is being framed, then he would appreciate greatly us telling him and sort of like trying to undo whatever the web of lies is that led to this. Um. I'm not sure 
I guess I was thinking of the Matrix as well in terms of the other characters, but I, it sounds like Count Dragon's really the only one that matters right now, unless you guys think differently. So I, I didn't quite catch your, what, what, you're saying with, what you were saying with that last point. Like when I was first thinking about this, I was um, wondering if this Viscount, for example, um, like what if he's in on it, but the Count is not? What if the Count's in on it, but this Viscount is not? Um, or likewise, uh, I mean. Yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think the Viscount is in on it personally. I mean, I guess I could be mistaken, but I, um, I, I don't believe he's in on it. I mean, his, um, um, I guess there's a possibility that um, it could be this, um, I guess it's possible that this, um, that this Zoloff is, it could be Zoloff and this Count, is, I mean, it's obviously the Count trusts this uh, Zoloff guy a lot, um, or I probably have his name wrong, uh, whatever his actual name, Z Zoland. I guess it's possible that Zoland is, is in on it and the Count doesn't know, but it seems unlikely. It seems that they're probably, they're probably together or not together, but I guess there's some, some risk that Zoland could be hiding something from, from the count, even though that seems unlikely to me. Uh, you guys can roll a linguistics check. Okay. Did you get the treasure, uh, Damon? Sorry, I, I did not yet. Um, a bit distracted here. Um, no worries. With... Nothing major. I just wanted to make sure you didn't miss it. Does anybody speak Drow? No. Um. I'm muted. I speak Elven, but, but I could probably decipher some Drow with that, right? Or is it completely... I, I'd have to look that up. I'm not sure. I think Drow is based on the Elven language. Might be based on Undercommon, though. Uh, does 23 linguistics help? Yeah, I was just waiting to see if anyone else was going to roll. So I can do the oh, bottom, ling bottom linguistics of the top. Here. Uh, da, 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 da. actually don't have any, so it's just a fucking intelligence. I could have sworn Damon had one, but I don't see it now. Maybe he learned to speak the language some other way. High intelligence, I guess. Okay. Drow has its own language, its own uh, alphabet. So it is not related to any other uh, thing. Oh, wow. And then he rolls a 20 on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Apollo, it doesn't uh, strike you as anything uh, significant. Arthur uh, kind of mentions that uh, Zolan sounds like a uh, drow name. And... Uh, Darius, you uh, also think that sounds uh, very much like a drow name. Uh, the use of uh, a Z in that combination, very indicative of uh, drow structure. And Damon, you uh, you actually recognized the name um, when you were crossing into Callum. Um, you heard uh, bounty hunters who were hunting for a drow named Zolan. Interesting. Well, I'll mention this to the others. Um, we could go back to Callum, see if we could pick up the trail there. Maybe find these bounty hunters or get a sense for what might be going on. Do you have any clue why you just knew that the bunny, bounty hunters want them, but not why they want them? It sounds like it. Yeah, it was just sort of an offhand comment in a tavern he heard somebody talking about this situation i was like oh that's kind of weird but didn't really give it any thought at the time uh it was like are we talking about like neutral bounty hunters that just take contracts from anyone or like or bounty hunters serving a particular anyone well this was in a human establishment but it was over near the elven edge of the forest so it could have potentially been uh an elven contract 
Um, but like I said, no real details. Humans who are bounty hunters are generally pretty neutral. They're there to get the money. Uh, so my question is what I know. So that, uh, that, uh, let me see. Was that, uh, where was that rumor? You po- I read a rumor somewhere. Oh, was was that's is that this central cheat sheet? Is that where the where, where was that rumor? The, oh, oh, that's right. There, so, never mind. I see the rumor. Uh, okay. Uh, my question is: Is it seems really strange to me that Count D- Dragon would even have any Drow followers? Since drow are generally highly chaotic, given that Bane is lawful, why would he have drow followers, them being chaotic and demon worshippers? That just seems strange. Okay, you can roll a knowledge religion. Nice check. Um, all of the drow that you've heard reference to are male, and there is a cult of uh, Veyrun. Veyrun? I forget how it's pronounced. Um, which is uh, the uh, drow god of basically masculinity in the same way as feminists, because it's a matriarchy. Um, and... Uh, he is hunted by Loth ever since he betrayed her, and his followers uh, tend to be neutral evil. And yeah. obviously, enemies of the Drow and Loth. Okay. Did I suss out any logical connection between if. If we assume that there is some kind of conspiracy that Count Dragon is not in on, but that Zoland is in on, could that somehow logically make any sense vis-a-vis the followers of this drow god of masculinity or whatever? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, that was just very confusing to listen to. I was like, I want to make sure I got the question right. Well, it's just... So we... It seems that Zoland and any of these other Drow followers um, are... Well, actually, first of all, it's kind of odd. If they follow, if they follow this god of masculinity, that's not Bane. So, first of all, that seems kind of odd, right? Yes, that would be a weird exception. Um, you can roll a knowledge local. Uh, the Emperor of Callum is a devout follower of Nistra. Oh, the Emperor. So... Weird. So the. So it's just. It's only the county that's Bay Knight territory. Nope, the whole country is. The whole country is, except the emperor. Do you have knowledge uh, history? Um, I think. So. Let me look. Yes. You probably have more ranks than I do, but uh, we'll give it a whirl. Oh, I'm rolled high. <laughs> okay. Um, how old are you, Darius? Um, Mid-20s. He's like 25. Okay. So you don't actually remember the collapse of uh, the Kelamese, uh Empire. But uh, before you were born, um, 
Callum invaded uh, two of the countries adjacent to it and actually held uh, two separate kingdoms for a short period of time. Unfortunately, it didn't go well. Uh, the emperor pushed his uh, advantage too far, got outflanked by both of the uh, opposing armies, and ended up losing more than half of his forces um, inside their territory. And it basically caused Callum to collapse in on itself. Um, during this period of time, uh, there was a lot of upheaval and uh, the emperor lost the favor of Bane. And a lot of the turmoil that has happened uh, over the last uh, couple of decades has been a result of that. Um, Apollo, you can roll a religion check as well. Um, you have on a couple of occasions been in situations where um, followers of Mistra have been unveiled within the uh, within the empire, and uh, it has just been quietly ignored. So it's the unofficial language kind of thing. It's another or not language, an un unofficial kind of religion. Uh, yes, uh, Mistra is Bane's uh, mother, and uh, Bane is very protective of his mother, and uh, he doesn't take kindly to those who annoy his mother. Uh, but how would that tie into this drow god of masculinity? That would seem, it would seem, so it makes sense that there'd then be an exception for Mistra given all this, but how would that create an exception for this drow god? Um, you can roll another, uh, local check. I think this has actually come up in game. <laughs> Excellent. Derp. Um, when you guys were given your titles and your title was upgraded, Darius, you were asking about who you would, uh, give fealty to. And one of the, uh, odd things that you noticed is that you pledge fealty to the Viscount and to the Count, but it stops there. You do not pledge fealty to the uh, Duke or the Emperor. Does the does either the Count or the Viscount uh, have any pledges up the chain? Um... I would say that's beyond your preview. Um, is it generally believed by the populace that, or assumed by the populace that they have such pledges of fealty? It is assumed, but there is no formal acknowledgement of it. Okay. Um, but I guess my earlier my earlier question was basically, so if we assume that Zoland and his his compatriots uh, worship this drow god of masculinity. Uh, then I guess the question is, would that create any reason that they would have, would that create any basis to plot him, plot against him in some way that would make sense in terms of this assassination attempt? None of this seems to have any bearing on the assassination attempt. This just seems to be an interesting uh, intellectual endeavor into all the different connections. But it's more like, do we have any reason to suspect that Zoland might be plotting against Count Dragon in a way that's, that this assassination could somehow be related to? Or nothing that, we are, that we're aware of? Uh, you can roll another knowledge local check. Um, you have never heard of any rumor or insinuation that uh, Zoland is anything but absolutely loyal to the Count. Okay. 
Well, if that's a ca- if that's the case, then Damon, then going through the matrix, going through the possibility of matrices, it seems, it seems that maybe we're better off, uh, we're better off not going to the count. I don't know. Uh, at least that's my initial impulse. Because he's probably going to say, "Yeah, I have, I what." <laughs> I have important reason to assassinate Damon. I it may even say I can't even tell you what that is, but uh, but trust me, he has to die. <laughs> Maybe what he's gonna say, I don't know. I guess that kind of puts the ball in your court, Damon. Yeah. Sorry, I was distracted for a second. So. You- what the last thing was just who was the like who, who would we ask to go do this because it sounds like there's there is quite a bit of political intrigue in all of this and the religious background and everything else so like what would be the well next i was i i kind of i kind of was looked in that line of inquiry but it didn't seem to lead anywhere in this i mean this is the f- initial thought was maybe that zoland is somehow plotting against uh, Count Dragon for whatever reason, but but as far as everyone knows, he's in reality he's he's just super ultra loyal to him. That could be, I mean, maybe that's false, but um, there's no indications that that's false. All indications are that he's super loyal to him. So that therefore, it seems unlikely that it's was that it was my initial thoughts that oh, yeah. the land is is. Is plotting against him. That seems. I mean, it's possible, but it's there's no indication that that's true. So if if that's the case, then it seems like that this assassination attempt was legitimate, and that the count believes, for whatever reason, that it is necessary to assassinate you. I have no idea what that reason would be, but if we go to him, if he took, if he took, if he took that step of of assassinating you, then we're unlikely to change his mind. I don't know what his reason right. is, but he, so, I doubt we're going to change his mind. <laughs> I mean, Damon's still going to go with his first instinct that this is uh, actually a, not an, an attempt that's directly from Count Dragon, but is re- from um, the uh, our because the only person that would want Damon killed that we know about right now is the. Um, The members of the Onyx Fang, who we kind of went over their head like that, uh, Colonel or whatever, and um, basically embarrassed them by presenting our legal arguments and uh, getting them off our back for accepting these titles of nobility and so on, and basically taking that job not officially on the Onyx Fang contract. So my thinking is that this is their way of trying to get back at us, Jill Damon, for having done that, kind of going over their head. And since they have political connections, maybe they pulled a few strings, got Count Dragon on board. Maybe Count Dragon didn't, wasn't fully aware of the operation or what the intent was or what was going on. But I would probably start with them. Like, they're the only ones that have the uh, motivation here. So we don't know how Zolan might be involved, but Damon's bet would be that those Onyx Fang like leaders would be involved. Oh, I like that because, I mean, I don't want to move ag- move against anyone here, even if it's like we suspect that there's some sort of insider traitor. If we start messing around and I start trying to dominate people and get the wrong person, then it could be, hey, you're that's not cool. You're dominating people within the court of your count that you've sworn feel feel to do. That's that's bad. But if we if we think that this originates from the Onyx folks and we move against them, and maybe if I can dominate someone in the know, then we're moving against the Onyx Fang and we're not moving against our own people. So I I like that direction of investigation. Okay. Uh, Damon, all of the other um, possibilities definitely have merit to them, but based on the information that you have, your theory is the only one that has no contradictions to the facts that you know. Right. Well, we should be in fact gathering mode. 
and we should probably not proceed with anything that we're not reasonably sure of what the outcome will be. So, for example, we probably should not proceed with the trial for the assassin um, yet until we are certain that uh, we're going to be cleared by Count Dragon and the other authorities for whatever, you know, crime or wrong that they believe that we've done. So you murdered the assassin yesterday. Well, yeah, yeah. But we can have the, the trial after it. it I'm, I'm sure there's a way we can make it fine legally if it comes to that. But I'm just saying, as an example, let's not do that until we know what, how that's going to be taken. So similarly, we probably shouldn't write that letter to Count Dragon or, you know, make a public appearance in his court asking, you know, for answers. We probably should move directly against the Onyx Fang because if we tick them off enough that they try to assassinate us, there's not really any more recourse for making. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um. The Onyx Fang, uh, like. Where are where are they even located? And that like you you know where more way more about them than I do. <laughs> well, you guys uh, teleported to the capital to talk to um, I think it was the general. Right, it was wh whoever was the superior for that colonel or whatever that was out of line. So yeah, this sounds like uh, some kind of private act of revenge then, because we got. We got an official okay for you. So according to official channels, you're okay. But you but it sounds like you pissed off someone who just wants personal revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is why we should probably make it personal. Like go visit yeah. them in the night, either kill them or make it clear that they can't mess with us and expect to live. Or at the very least, capture and dominate a key person and find out what's really going on, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be good as well. So why don't we start by trying to target that colonel then? Why don't we start with uh, rolling a uh, lo knowledge local check? Uh... Um, both uh, Damon and uh, Apollo, you... Uh, you are aware that a uh, contract of this nature will need to be fulfilled one way or the other. So uh, whether you kill the uh, colonel or expose the colonel, he's already paid for the contract. So the uh, the moon claws are going to carry it out. Well, I think our, I think we should go uh, <coughs> talk to the moon claws. That's your next step, then. Well, I think, I still think we deal with the Onyx Fang, and then, so that we know what the heck's going on, because if we find out, if we find out who's responsible and have dealt with them, um, then, then, then we could potentially deal with it from the Moonclaw angle. Also, even, also could we potentially dominate, um, well, that, that's a good question, whoever started the contract and paid for it. Can that person come back and say, "Hey, keep my money, but I'm canceling the contract"? Can the person who made the contract cancel it? Yeah, if you can find out who originally uh, uh, initiated the contract, they can cancel it. Oh, well, I think our next bet is to uh, maybe uh, try to catch the next assassin. Sounds like they're going for Damon before any of us. So if we just keep watch, if we just have a watch over Damon. Mm. Uh, catch the next, catch the next assassin. Well, how is that gonna help us? <clears throat> and then we can f get find a way to who got the contract. We start going up the grapevine. Right. Well, we won't. Why, why would that assassin know any more than this last one, though? But no, the uh, but we'd be able to f not the not the, the the assassin would know the contract. It was, the assassin would know the next person to go up to, and we could start going up the grapevine. Find the assassin. Find the find the assassin's den. Find the leader. Well, that's if we wanted to pursue the assassins. That we know we, we know the assassin's den and the assassin leader. It's uh it's uh, it's Count Count Dragon. It's the official official state government assassins killed. 
Yeah, the assassin told you all that information. I, I oh, didn't right. even think about that when you dominated, or I expected you to follow the trail of breadcrumbs like Apollo just said. But uh, Darius dominated her, and she told you everything. Okay, well, then we got to figure, do we go talk to the uh, Onyx Fang about, uh, see if they have anything to do with this? Yeah, I said we go after the people who have reason to be pissed off of, of Damon. Basically, go and uh, go in, um, go in in you know stealthily and with force. Um, keep um, capture one, capture at least one living person in the know. Dominate them and find out, verify, see if we can verify from that who um, who actually specified the contract. It's probably it's probably Damon's old uh, old leader or whatever or one of one of his old leaders. Yeah, this so it's probably this Colonel Norwich. So either either grab him or at least grab one of his confidants, capture them, take them away uh, from where they are, dominate them, and hopefully grab grab him himself and dominate him and get him to spill the beans. And if it's not him, at least we've uh, at least we've eliminated that eliminated uh, you know process of elimination. We've eliminated that our that possibility. <laughs> Is there a um, between this colonel and this major? Are they close enough that they would share any confidants in common who know a lot about both of them? And so if we capture that person, they would know if either one of them did it? Well, generally speaking, um, if you're going to plot an assassination, you don't broadcast it to people. So um, well, maybe, like, maybe, maybe, maybe they might have an inner circle who would know, though. Again, if you're going to plot an assassination, particularly a personal assassination, you don't tell people that you're doing uh, it. Well, this that is, makes sense. This is more personal than it is political now at this point. Yeah, because it's it's off the it's it's completely off the record because on the record you're fine, but you got official approval, so this would have to be in secret. So yeah, I guess we just I guess we just start by capturing capturing Colonel Norwich and uh and dominating him to find out if he did it. I mean that's that's my thought. Yep. Um, not to, uh, throw a wet blanket on your plan, but capturing Colonel Norwich is going to be a monumental task, particularly in the capital city. Right. Well, I think we need to go in, um, go in stealth, but kind of, kind of plan it like an assassination, except, but rather than, rather than, than an assassination, it's going to be a, 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 a kidnapping. <laughs> I, I understand you, your plan I'm just saying this is a high ranking military officer you're not just going to sneak into his house and grab it right. well someone snuck in and almost killed uh, <laughs> Damon <laughs> that's true but Damon is not a high ranking military officer Damon is just a guy who is staying at your house uh, he's close enough to a high ranking military officer as far as I'm concerned <laughs> You guys can do whatever you want, but Damon is well aware that these, this isn't some bookworm who isn't going to put up a fight. This is someone that if you get into a fight with, you're going to start a major issue. And this is an assassination type situation, so you'll be on the wrong side of the law this time. Remember what we just did for the assassin? Yeah, that, that, that's, not, that's not good. Well, yeah. is, if we want to, if we want to try and use more official channels, you guys are aware of the Onyx Fang organization more than I am. Could you go to them and say, "Hey, we believe <coughs> that this person may have plotted plotted an assassination attempt against me. We want to give him an exoneration attempt." Um, would you got Would you be willing to to take him and have him put in front of a zone of truth? And you know, ask him under oath whether he uh, knows anything about this assassination attempt or not. Uh, would they be willing to do that or not? 
Um, if you were to provide some kind of proof that he was involved, they might consider it. The problem with any kind of magical uh, coercion is it's not acceptable in court, so it wouldn't be considered evidence. Well, I mean, if it's in a zone of truth, like a zone of truth, it's uh, it's not magical coercion. It's just if he says something false, it'll. He can't say up. something false. I I understand how the spell works. I'm telling you from the point of view of the legal system is it is possible to say you're casting zone of truth when you're actually casting dominate person and then get someone to testify on the stand magically coerced. But I'm saying having them have the black onyx fang run uh do the questioning so they you know they're in charge of it they they know what they cast <laughs> yeah there's definitely the potential for that but they're not going to uh call up a senior officer on charges without some kind of evidence that he's involved okay yeah we need we need stronger proof to get them to do that right um like you can't just go in and tell the Viscount you think he was involved in the thingy and get the Count to interrogate him. That's not how it works. The Count's going to say, fuck off. I've known him for years. He wouldn't do that unless you're providing me with some kind of proof that he's involved. I don't believe you. So, no. And since you have at least two suspects, you can't even put your finger on who's involved in it. Well, I wonder if like I wonder if there's some sort of way we could catch them in the act per se, right? Like suppose that the um, so we know the assassins are going to come back, right? Like let's say this is a, a, a crazy plan or whatever, right? So let's say that the So the assassins come back, they try to kill us, we stop them. We, however, dominate the assassin <clears throat> and allow you to continue to control the assassin, Darius, as the assassin brings back word that the deed is done and provides some proof that Damon has been killed, for example, right? And then um, with that, um, the assassins would presumably report this to whoever it was that first hired them. So they would probably report this to, say, the colonel. The colonel was the one that gave them. And when the colonel receives that notice, we've sort of previously set up to record this incident or, like, keep track of this. And so we basically catch them red-handed, like, you know, being told or, or informed that Damon has been killed. Now, maybe the assassins group is smart enough that they take all the money up front and, you know, it's sort of like they never have contact with the the client again after they, they ask for the killing or something, but that seems like a terrible business model. So I assume they have some kind of check at the end, like either further payment or another confirmation of, that the deed has been complete. But uh, Well, I think they've already been paid, but the, I would assume that they, they would still want confirmation. How would that work? So would the would the person who 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 paid for this, they've already paid for it, but they would presumably get that person would assumably presumably get confirmation when the job was done uh you can roll a knowledge local for that i was just thinking with your dominate what if we were if damon's fine with losing a finger follow the assassin or follow the assassin back we let the assassin fool the assassin into thinking that he killed him with your dominate and then we just follow the assassin back that's exactly what damon just said oh fuck i'm like i'm like zoning out sorry my uncle keeps coming downstairs well the problem is he is going to we can do that but then the assassin is going to go back to the assassinations guild which is presumably fairly sophisticated so it's going to be difficult to follow him undetected given that it's a guild of assassins plus they might even they're probably the men going to use detect magic to make sure he's not enchanted so i would think that 
that has a high chance of, of getting detected by the right. assassin skill. Right. Well, hmm. it probably does have a high chance of being detected. I guess the only advantage of this is that this is pretty much not illegal because these assassins are already sort of extra legal entities and they did try to assassinate Damon. So, you know, especially if one tries to assassinate him again, then we could do this stuff. So the main advantage of this in my mind is just that it's not crossing any legal boundaries. Um, but I mean, the general that we first went to before when the colonel got out of line said that we could go back to him if the colonel went out of line again. So really it is just a matter of finding any evidence at all. Like we don't need the assassin to survive very long in there, just long enough for them to deliver the message that Damon's been killed. And then for that information to reach the colonel say, and uh, implicate the colonel. I think it would just be hard to kind of follow that chain because the, the assassin's gonna go back to the guild Mm -hmm. The assassin is then going to report to somebody in the guild, I've done, actually, well, we don't even know precisely what the chain is, but, but in some way, shape or form, he's going to, he is going to go give back, inf he's going to go give back information to somebody in the guild, or maybe even just to count dragon that the job has been done. And then somebody internal in the guild, presumably, is going to go and give that information to the person who hired who hired the job but it's just following that entire chain because that's like internal internal guild information that they're trying to keep secret to have somebody invisibly stealthy and spying on them um it's going to be difficult especially given that they're in an assassinations guild their knowledge about spying infiltration they probably have countermeasures to that and so unless unless we have someone really really good even if they're like invisible and stuff, it would be hard to follow that entire chain back, spying on them, because you know, likely they have countermeasures to being spied on. So you have to have someone. <laughs> right, right. Well, the, the point is that you don't have to follow the chain inside the Assassin's Guild. I think the point is that you you just need to send the person there to inform the Assassin's Guild that the assassination was successful. And then you don't really care what happens after that as long as they don't figure out that the assassination failed. And then when the word, like we basically go all the way to the end of the line, since we know the colonel is the likely person to hire and we're spying on the colonel basically, and we catch him the moment that he receives the word. That okay, I, so we have people, we have people spying okay. on the colonel himself and seeing yeah. if, uh, so that we know when he gets word. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's the idea, or presumably the idea, right? So, you know, the colonel will be informed that the assassination was successful, and that'll be the proof that we need to order a higher scale investigation, you know, from the his superior, the general, or whoever else. It's probably not going to be easy that that easy to spy on on the colonel either, at least. Um... Like how 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 specifically are we going to spy on the colonel to know when he gets informed? Because after we have to have someone to watch him at all times. A and... scrying spell. <clears throat> yeah, but scrying spells have durations. Yeah, true. True. 